The stage curtain opens slowly to reveal a dimly lit woodland glade. Reflections of dark green. A wisp of mist pierced by yellow sunbeams. Lights brighten to sunny yellow as the ducal court enters, led by Theseus and Hippolyta, his bride to be. Spirit of earth, turn melancholy forth to funerals. I will wed thee with pomp, with triumph, and with liberty. daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander. And, my gracious duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart, turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. And, my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, Hermaid. To you, your father should be as a god. One that composed your beauties? Yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted, and within his power to lead the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is my thunder. In himself he is, but in this kind wanting our father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made more. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
seven leagues. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. Steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood there will I stay for thee. Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass. A time that lovers' flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds, were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius.
Eleanor exits. Lights dim on the greenwood as the curtain falls. opens on the wood, now sunny. A group of six workers enter. Quince, snug, bottom, flute, snout and starveling. Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally man, boy, man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, could Peter Quince say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so go to a point. Now plays the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A little dance of delight, a Morris with a hop. by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you. Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a titan? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. Now, name the rest of the players. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take this be with you. What is this be? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Oh, nay, face, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. <laughs> oh, well, you shall play in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe! Thisbe! Ah, oh, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy Thisbe dear and lady dear. Oh, no, 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 you must play Pyramus. A flute, you Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starlin, the tailor. Here, Peter Quince. Robin Starlin, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Quince. You, Pyramus' father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snout, the joiner. You, the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitting. Uh, have you the lion part written? Uh, pray you, if it be, give it me, for I'm slow of study. <laughs> you may do it extemporary. For it is nothing but glory. Let me play a lion too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, Let him roar again. Let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would frighten the duchess and the ladies. That they would shriek. And that were enough to hang us all. That would hang, hang us all. And hang us all. And hang us all. I grant you. If you should frighten ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will raw you as gently as any sucking dove. I will raw you and twer any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman like. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, 
I will undertake it. What beard were it best to play it in? Why, what you will. I will discharge you in either your straw-coloured beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple and green beard, or your French crown coloured beard. <laughs> your perfect yellow. <laughs> Masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night. And meet me in the palace wood, and by the wooden the town by moonlight. There will we rehearse. I pray you, pay me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most of safely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, and you, at the Duke's oak we meet. Lights up as Puck and a fairy enter from opposite sides. Sweet Puck, 
Are you not he? Thus be destroys, I am that merry wanderer of the night. I just to Oberon and make him smile when I have fat and been fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness to a filly foal. But room, fairy, here comes Oberon. And here my mistress, would that he were gone. Enter Titania with her fairies to a blue light and green. Then Oberon joins Puck with green light and blue.
It then it lies in you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but make a little changing boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest, the fairy land buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night full often hath she gossiped by my side, and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When we have laughed, to see the sails conceive and grow big-bellied with the wanton wind. Which she, her womb, then rich with my young squire, would imitate. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy, and for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. <laughs> from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle back, come hither, come hither. Oh. 
Sleeping eyes laid will make a man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb and be thou here again ere the Leviathan will swallow me. I put a girdle round about the earth in forty minutes. upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear that conference. Enter Demetrius and Helena. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen to this wood, and here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron. For my heart is true as steel. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel. And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me. Neglect me, lose me, only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not. To trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege for that. It is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night. I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. Let me go, or if thou follow me, do not but believe I shall do thee mischief in the wood. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and were not made to woo. 
Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Why, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. Titania enters with her fairies.
sweet Titania sleeps and her fairies exit. Oberon enters and squeezes juice on Titania's eyelids. What thou seest when thou dost wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake. Be it ounce or cat or bear, Pard or boar with bristled hair, in thy eye that shalt appear when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. dim towards evening. Enter Lysander and Hermia. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood. And, to speak truth, I have forgot our way.
rest with half that wish the wishes eyes be pressed they sleep and puck enters He doth wear, and hear the maiden sleeping sound on the dank and dirty ground. Pretty soul, she durst not lie near this lack love, this kill courtesy. Churl upon my eyes I throw, all the power this charm doth owe. Exits, then Demetrius enters running, pursued by Helena. Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, wilt thou darkly leave me? Do not so. Say on my peril, I alone will go. Demetrius runs off. I am out of breath in this fond chase.
But who is here? Lysander on the ground. Dead or asleep. Lysander, if you live, good sir, awake. And run so far I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena. Nature shows heart that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Not a mere, but Helena. When at your hands did I desire this love? Perforce I must confess I thought you lord of more true gentleness. Should of another therefore be abused. She sees not her me. She breaks away and runs off. Me asleep thou there, and never mayst thou come Lysander near. Helen, I love. He exits running after her. Hermia awakes. immediately. Curtain closes slowly. Titania is asleep. The six workers enter. Marvellous convenient place for our rehearsal. This green plot shall be our stage. This break, our town house. And we will do it in action. As we will do it before the Duke. <laughs> uh, Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Willie Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a saw to kill himself, which the ladies cannot avoid. I answer you that. Why are like in the parlour sphere? I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a way. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Button the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Wow. Well. We will add such a prologue, and it shall be written in six. Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? Oh, I fear it, I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourself to bring in, God shield us, 
A lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we are to look to it. Therefore another proverb must tell he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must speak through, saying thus, for it had the same defect, Ladies, or fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, for life, uh, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man as other men are. And there, indeed, let him name his name, and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into a chamber. For you know, Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine that night we play our play? A calendar! A calendar! Look at the almanac! Find our moonshine! Find our moonshine! Yes, it doth shine that night. Why? Then you may leave the casement of the great chamber window, where we play, open. And the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye. Or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lantern and say he comes to this figure or to present the person of moonshine. And there is another thing. We, we must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, says the story, did talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin, and when you have spoken your speech, enter into that break, and so every one according to his cue. Puck enters behind. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here? So near the cradle of the fairy queen. What a play to hold, a play to hold. I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Bottom exits, followed by Puck. Most radiant Paramus, most lily white of hue, of colour like the red rose on triumphant briar. Most risky juvenile, and eke most lovely Jew, as true as truest horse that would never tire. I'll meet thee, Paramus, at Nanny's tomb. Ninus tomb, man. Why, you must not speak that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your parts at once, cues and all. Pyramus! Enter! Your cue is past! It is never tire! Oh, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. Bottom re-enters wearing an ass's head. The workers run around in fear. If I were fair, Thisbe, I were only thine. Oh, Lazarus, us friends, we are all the cry masters, cry masters, help! I follow you, I'll lead you about our hands. Thara bog, thara briar. Sometime a horse I be, sometime a hound, a hog, a headless bear, sometime a fire. Why do they run away? This is a knavery of them to make me a fear. Oh, God, look at their chase. What do we see on thee? I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to fright me, if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. We will walk up and down here and sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. The Ouzel Cox 
so black of you with orange tawny bill to thrust with his note so true the red with little quill What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow and the log the plain song called grey Who's now for many a man doth mock And dares no answer
and do him courtesies. Your worship's name. Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make ball with you. Your name on his channel, man. He's blotter. I shall desire a more acquaintance, too. Your name I beseech you, sir. Must it seem? Must it seem? I promise you, your kindred have made my eyes water hair now. the Athenian's eyes with the love juice. As I did bid thee do. I took him sleeping, and the Athenian by his side, that when he ate waked, she must be eyed. Enter Hermia, pursued by Demetrius. Stand close. This is the same Athenian. This is the woman, but not this the man. Thank you. 
There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while I will remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow. For debt that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow owe. He sleeps. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite. Made thy love to some some true love sight. A brother would go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens would thou find. By some illusion, see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eyes against she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than the air upon the Tartar's door. This purple dawn, sinking apple of his eye, when his love he do espy, let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. And aside, the noise they make will cause Demetrius to awake. Then we'll two at once woo one. That must needs be sport alone. <laughs> Enter Helena, pursued by Lysander. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Scorn and tears and never come in tears. Oh, you're bad enough. 
not by mine eye thy sandals found. Mine ear I thank thee to afford me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay on love that breast to go? What love could press thy sandals from my soul? I should have loved, but not let him find. Thou burr, vile thing, let loose, 
or I will shake you from me like a serpent. <laughs> Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet yeah. love? Thy love, out, tawny charger, <laughs> out, out, loathe the medicine, oh, hated potions. Do you, Hence. Do you not jest? Yes, Zeus, and so do you. <sighs> Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? Should I hurt her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you left me? Oh, the gods forbid! shall I say? Ay, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. <laughs> Therefore, be out of hope, a question <laughs> of doubt. Be certain, nothing true. It is not just that I do hate thee, and to love Helena. Oh, me, you juggler! You canker blossom! Oh. You thief of love! What though come by night and stolen my love's heart from this fine in face? <laughs> Have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit! Oh, you puppet! Puppet, you! Why so? I that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, oh. her height, forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maple? Oh, speak! How low am I? I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach up to thy eyes! I treat you, though you mock me, gentlemen! Let her not hurt me! I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. I am a right mate for my cowardice. Let her not hurt uh, me! Uh, you may perhaps think that because she is something lower than myself, Sea 
Christ is the best place to fight. I therefore rub it over, cast the night. The starry welkin cover thou and on with grooving fog, as black as a caron, and lead these testy rivals so Counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and fatty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath this virtuous property to take from thence all error. Lysander and Demetrius enter and exit as Puck misleads. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Lysander, speak again, thou runaway. Thou coward, art thou fled? Speak! In some bush, where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, art thou bragging to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookst for walls? And wilt not come? Come, recreant, come, thou child, I'll whip thee with a rod. Yea, art thou there? Enter Lysander, wearily. The villain is much lighter healed than I. I followed fast, but faster did he fly. That fallen am I in dark. Uneven way, and here will rest me. He sleeps. Enter Demetrius. Constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. He sleeps. Enter Helena wearily. Sleep that 
sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye, steal me a while from mine own company. She sleeps. Enter Hermia. Round, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb known, that every man should take his own, in your waking shall be shown. Jack shall have Jill, naught shall go ill. The man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Curtain opens on the wood where Lysander, Demetrius, Helena and Hermia are lying asleep. Titania, her fairies and bottom enter.
Titania and Bottom sleep. Oberon enters and leads Titania off in a trance, undoing the spell. stands over bottom as the curtain closes slowly. Curtain opens on the wood. Lights brighten as Theseus and his hunting party enter. Since we have the flower of the day, my love shall hear the music of my hounds. Uncouple in the western valley, let them go. Dispatch, I say, and find the forest We will take me down to the mountain's top. And while the musical confusion of the hounds and Is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of her choice? It is, my lord. Good morrow, friends. St. Valentine is past. Begin these wood birds but to couple now. Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy to seek by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazingly, half sleep, half waking, but as yet I swear, I cannot truly say how I came here, but as I think, for truly would I speak, and now I do bethink me, so it is, I came with Hermia hither. Our intent was to be gone from Athens, where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law, enough, my lord, enough, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would. Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me, you of your wife, and me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury hither followed them, fair Helena in fancy following me. But, my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is. My love to Hermia, melted as the snow, seems to me now as the remembrance of an idle gourd which in my childhood I did dote upon. And all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye is only Helena. 
Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we will we more will hear anon. Aegis, I will overbear your will, for in the temple by and by with us these couples shall eternally be knit. And for the morning now is something worn, our purposed hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three, we'll hold a feast in great solemnity. <laughs> Taste his tongue to 
You said to Bottom's house. Is he come home yet? He cannot be heard of. Out of doubt, he is transported. If he come not, then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. We have not a man in all Athens able to discharge Pyramus but he. No, he hath simply the best wit of any handicraft man in Athens. Yea, and the best person too. And he is a very paramour for a sweet voice. You must say paragon. A paramour is, God bless us, a thing of naught. Masters, the duke is coming from the temporal. And there is two or three more lords and ladies, and them all married. If our sport had gone forward, we have been made men. Oh, oh, sweet bully bottom. Thus hath he lost sixpence a day during his life. He could not have escaped sixpence a day. And the Duke had not given him sixpence a day for playing Pyramus, I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. Sixpence a day in Pyramus or nothing. Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? Oh, oh, most courageous day, most happy hour. Masters, I am the Discourse Wonders. But ask me not what, for if I tell you I am not true Athenian, I will tell you everything right as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together. Good strings to your beards, new ribbons to your pumps. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look o'er his part. For the shaw and the long is, our play is preferred. <sighs> In any case, let Thisbe have clean linen. And let him that plays the lion not pair his nails. For they shall hang out for the lion's claws. And, most dear actors, eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt but to hear them say it is a sweet comedy. No more words. Away! Go! Away! Such a 
in your royal walks, your board, your bed. Come now, what masks, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? Where is our usual manager of mirth? What revels are in hand? Is there no play to ease the anguish of a torturing hour? Call Philistrate. Here, mighty Theseus. Say, what abridgment have you for this evening? What mask, what music? How shall we beguile the lazy time, if not with some delight? There is a brief, with many sports are right. Make choice of which your highness will see first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The battle with the centaurs to be sung by an Athenian eunuch to the half. We'll have none of that. <laughs> A tedious brief scene of young Pinimus and his love, Thisbe. Very tragical mirth. <laughs> Merry and tragical? Tedious and brief? That is hot ice and wondrous strange snow. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long, <laughs> which makes it tedious, for in all the play there is not one word act, one player fitted. Mm -hmm. And tragical, my noble lord, it is, for Pyramus therein doth kill himself, oh. which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made mine eyes water, but for merry tears, the passion of loud laughter never shed. <laughs> <laughs> what are they that do play it? hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never laboured in their minds till now, oh. and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with this same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. I have heard it over, and it is nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport in their intents, extremely stretched and come with cruel pain to do you service. I will hear that play, for never anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness surcharged and duty in his service perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kind of we to give them thanks for nothing. Our sport shall be to take what they mistake, and what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes it in might, 
not merit. So please, Your Grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. Consider then, we come not, but in despite, we do not come as money to content you, our true intent is, all for your delight. We are not here. <laughs> he hath written his prologue like a rough cult. He knows not the stop. Indeed, <laughs> he hath played on this prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not a government. <laughs> Who is next? Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. Th this beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. This man, <laughs> with lime and rough cast, doth present war, that vile war which did these lovers sunder. And through war's chink, poor souls, what? they are content to whisper, at the which let no man wonder. This man, this man with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn, presented moonshine. Mm. Or, if you will know by moonshine, did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus too? There, there to, to woo this grisly beast, which lion height by name. Oh. <laughs> the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle, she did fall, which lion foil with bloody mouth did stain. Anon, anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat with blade, with bloody blameful blade, he bravely broke his boiling bloody breast, <laughs> and Thisbe, tarrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion moonshine wall and lovers twain at large discourse, while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion be to speak. No wonder, my lord, one lion may when many asses do. <laughs> <laughs> this same allude it doth befall that I, one stout by name, present a wall, and such a wall as I would have you think that had in it a crannied hole or a chink. <laughs> through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this, the cranny, is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. Would you desire Lyman's hair to speak better? It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse. <laughs> Enter Pyramus, who draws near the wall. A whim looks light, or nigh with you so black. Please. 
feeling sensible to pass again. Oh, she's so she should not. <laughs> Deceiving me is this beast you. She's doing it now and I am aspire through the wall. You shall see you at full cat as we told you. Younger she comes. <laughs> Excellent men, he come to noble be seen, a man and a lion. You ladies, you whose gentle hearts do fear, the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perhaps perchance both quake and tremble here. When lion wrath in wall is raised a roar, then know that I am snug the joiner and a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. A very gentle beast and of a good conscience. Let us listen to the moon. This land thorn doth the horned moon present. He should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> this land thorn doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man in the moon, do seem to be. Man should be out into the lantern. How else is it the man in the moon? I am weary of this moon. Would he would change? It appears that he is in the way, but yet, in courtesy, in no reason, we must take the time. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you that the land of thorn is the moon, I the man in the moon, this thornbush, my thornbush, and this dog, my dog. Here comes Fisby. This is a
sang the moon for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious cold and glittering gleams, I trust to take of Troas this beside. But stay, O oh spy, but far for night, what dreadful cold is here. Eyes, do you see how can it be? Oh, they need that old dear, thy man no good, but stay with blood. Approach, ye furies, fell on fates. Come, 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 dread and drum. Quell, crush, conclude. And quell. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lie and spray? Since lion vile and you deflowered, my dear. Which is, no, no, which was, which was the fairest day that lived and loved and liked and looked with a cheer. Come, tears are confound, out soul and womb, the path of a perilous. I that left path where our doth hop. Thus toy I thus, son of thus, son of thus. Love I did, love I fled, my soul is in the sky. Tongue, lose thy life, moon, take thy flight. Now die, 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 die. Starlight, if she comes and her passion ends a blame, oh, she will be brief. She has spied him already with her sweet eyes. Asleep, my love. Shine and lion are left to bury the dead. No, no epilogue, I pray you, for your play needs no excuse. Never excuse, for when the players are all dead, there needs none to be blamed. Marry if he that writ it had played Pyramus and hanged himself in Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. 
and so it is. Truly, come, your burgomask. The players dance a Morris with a hop, then exit. dark green with a moon at night. Puck and the fairies enter in yellow and purple spotlights. Oh, 
Fairies exit, leaving Puck alone on stage. Mm -hmm. 